number nine from the 2006 High Maths Paper 1. A big question here, a big wad of marks, 11 marks altogether, bringing in a few things that bring in the vectors with angle between vectors and scalar products and the business about factorising cubic expressions. So the first part for two marks is this. Here are these two vectors. If the scalar product is 1, show that this equation applies. So that just means, do you know how to find the scalar product? Well, it's a product, that means there's a multiplication involved. It's a scalar product, which means the answer isn't a vector. Like adding vectors obviously involves an addition, but the result is a vector. You keep your three additions separate. With the scalar product, you're going to be doing the multiplications, but add them up to form a single number. So what is the scalar product? Multiply the corresponding components. That means that k cubed times 1 plus multiplying the y components, 1 times 3k squared, plus multiplying the z components, k plus 2 times negative 1, this says should equal 1. Now there's your first mark. For knowing how to do the scalar product, multiplying the corresponding components and adding them up to a single number. Now the next mark's just for getting this then. So what have we got? We've got k cubed, plus 3k squared. Here we've got minus a k, minus a 2, equals a 1. Take that across and subtract. k cubed plus 3k squared minus k minus 3 equals 0. And there's the second mark for that part. So part B then, now there's five marks for this. Show that k plus 3 is a factor of this and factorise it completely. That's why I put the question mark. Is it a factor? Now there are three ways you could do this. So I think I'll start with the way that you'd probably do it, because you might be unaware of the other two, which would be synthetic division. Now I'll have to watch my wording here, because notice this is an, an equation here. So strictly speaking, I can't use the term root, because the root is a solution of an equation equal to zero. So what I'd say here is, I'd have to start off by saying k plus 3 is a factor means that the value at k equals negative 3 equals zero. So that's what I'm going to test. If you put negative 3 into this, does that give the answer zero? But I'm not going to put it in directly. I'm going to use that in the second method. I'm going to put it in by using synthetic division to evaluate it. Remember, that's the purpose of synthetic division. It's both an evaluation and a division. If I put down these four coefficients, the 1, the 3, the negative 1, and the negative 3, and they are all there. Power 3 means there should be the four terms and I feed negative 3 through it, what I'm really doing is evaluating this expression at negative 3. But it also serves the purpose of mimicking, of being an analogy of the division. That's why you call it a synthetic division. So I'll feed this through this. Which means you bring the 1 down, multiply it by negative 3, add it down, that's a 0. Multiply it up, so that's a 0. Bring it down, a negative 3. Multiply it back up, and that gives me a 3. Finally add it, and you've got a 0. Now there's a couple of marks in here. The first mark is for knowing to use negative 3. If that's a factor, then the root, if it was an equation, is negative 3. So that's the first mark. We're going to put it here. The second one is for getting this answer of 0. In the marking scheme it says something as simple as just underlining it is sufficient to get that mark. In that it acknowledges this 0 here, but you should really have a statement that says something along the lines of the value at k equals negative 3 is 0. You could also say the remainder on dividing is 0. But since it's we're going for an evaluation, you can go for that. So I'll say the value at k equals negative 3 equals 0. That means that k plus 3 is a factor. Now, using this method, actually, there's three marks of it up to this point. Because getting the answer of zero would have been the second mark, really. 
The work that you've done in this table counts as another mark because you've carried out a synthetic division. So that identification of the zero corresponds to this. So you could put that mark there or that mark there. I think I'll put it over here, which is where it strictly belongs. But there's another mark here for using this synthetic division because you've carried out a division and it's told you something else. What it's told you is, if you go into the second part then to factorise it fully, you've got this expression, notice it's not equal to zero, so don't put equal zero there, though I don't see anything in the marking scheme that would take a mark off if you put equal to zero, is equal to, I know it's got the factor k plus three, and this synthetic division gives you the other factor, the quadratic factor here, which is those three terms. That'll be a k squared plus 0k minus 1. So you've got a k squared minus 1. That's the fourth mark for this part using synthetic division. And then finally, to factorise it fully, hopefully you'll recognise the difference of two squares. So k plus 1, k minus 1 for the fifth mark. Or I could just do a proper division to do this actually divide this, actually divide k plus 3 into this expression, k cubed plus 3k squared minus a k minus a 3, just like any long division, as if you were dividing into a number with its column headings, units, tens, hundreds, thousands. So starting from this side, I need to put this into here. So the first step is how many of these could make this? How many k's would make a k cubed? That would be k squared times it. So I'll put a k squared in the k squareds column and multiply it out. k squared times the 3 is 3k squared, and that was a plus. k squared times k is a k cubed. And multiply it out and subtract to see what's left over, and there's nothing left over. Then you bring down, just like you put the remainder up to the next term, I bring that down to it, 0 minus k. Same again. How many, this is the k's column, how many k's could I multiply this by to get this? None of them. So if you like, that's a zero. So that means I'm going to have that take away zero, it just leaves it alone effectively. It's still just a minus k. Bring the next number down. So it's these two I'm working with now. So how many k's does it take to make this? Minus one. Minus one times that, and minus one times that, Subtract it to see the remainder, and there's no remainder. So that's a proper algebraic division. If you were doing it this way, the marks would go, there'd be one mark for setting out this division. Wherever I'll put that. So we don't know, put it over here somewhere. There'd be one mark for completing it. And then, as before, you need a statement. Now notice, that was exactly the same, there was no remainder. So I could say remainder zero, because that's the way I'm going to prove it's a factor. The way I'm going to prove it is a factor is by saying the remainder is zero, so that meant it divided in exactly. That meant that k plus three is a factor. Right, and there's that third mark. Now, do the factorization. k cubed plus three k squared minus k minus three. What was that equal to? Well, if that divides into this exactly that number of times, Taking that across and multiplying means that k plus 3 times k squared, there's no point in putting 0k, k squared minus 1 should equal that. That's a mark. Of course, that came out of this division. And then finally, factorise that quadratic. It's the difference of two squares, k plus 1, k minus 1. There's the fifth mark. And there is a third way which doesn't involve trying to divide at all. First of all, I'll sort to show that that's a factor, but I'll be shown it's a factor just by checking that negative 3 works. So I'll make this statement, I'm not sure if this part's needed. I would say k plus 3 is a factor, means that k equals negative 3. Now I can't say as a root because it's not the equation equal to 0. So I'll say k, but you'd probably get the mark for that if you did it. k equals 3 gives answer 0. So test if it does. So put that in. Now, there's the first mark for knowing to use negative 3. So put negative 3 into that. You've got negative 3 cubed plus 3 times negative 3 squared minus a negative 3 minus a 3. Well, that equals, and these things all match, because there's a 
a negative 3 to the power 3, and this will be a squared positive 3 to the power 3. So what's that? That's a negative 27 plus a 27 plus a 3 minus a 3. It all cancels out to 0. And since I've already made this statement, that's a factor if negative 3 gives the answer 0. I've got the answer 0, so that means that k plus 3 is a factor. There's your second mark. Now the three marks that are left won't be done by trying to do a division. It'll be done by trying to find factors that work. So that here you've got this. If k plus 3 times something equals k cubed plus 3k squared minus k minus 3, then the first thing you'd realise is this has to be a quadratic. Because the first times the first gives the first, and the last times the last gives the last. So the first times the first must be a k squared. It's the only thing it could be. Only a k times a k squared can give that. Remember, no other term interferes with this k cubed. And the coefficient at the end, the absolute coefficient, can only come from the constant times the constant. So if that's a negative, a plus 3, that must be a minus 1. So the only thing that's left in doubt is, this is certainly a quadratic, what's the middle term? So I'll just make up some name for it. I'll say plus a lots of k. It must look like that. What you're doing is just trying to manufacture factors that work. If this multiplies something to give this, it must be a quadratic, and I know the first and the last terms, because the first times the first gives the first, and the last times the last gives the last, so it's just what's this a? And you do that by equating coefficients. You can use either of these terms. If I use the k squared term, What makes k squared out of this? Well, it's not k times k squared, because that's a k cubed. It's not k times negative 1, because that's just a k. It's a k times this. So it's a k times an a k squared. So that'll be a k squared. And what else makes a k squared? The 3 times it now. Well, it's not the 3 times this. That's just a k. It's not 3 times that. That's just a number. It's plus 3k. That makes the k squared term, and that should equal... 3k squared. I suppose from that alone you can see, well, there's a 3k squared, so a must be 0. Or you could finish it off. If those two terms are the same, and of course that says you've got a plus 3 lots of k squared, the a plus 3 should equal the 3, in which case a must be 0. Now I'm jumping ahead here, I haven't put in the mark so far. The first mark would have been for realising that that linear factor would have required a quadratic factor, so the first of the three marks would be for having that. The second mark is for finding these parts, because that negative one comes at the same time as that. So the second mark is for getting that a equal to a zero, so that you can now say you've got k plus 3 times k squared minus 1. That would be the second mark. Effectively, that really is for realising here that a is zero. And then the final mark, as before, is just for fully factorising the difference of two squares there. Whoops. k squared plus 1. Sorry, k plus 1, k minus 1, for the third mark of that part, for the 5 altogether. Now, part C says, deduce the only possible value of k. Now, it doesn't say in what, because part B wasn't an equation, so there was no values involved there. It should have really have said, the only possible value of k for part A, i.e. for k cubed plus 3k squared minus k minus 3 equals 0. It should have said, deduce the only possible value of k that solves this. Well, you've already factorised it. There's only one mark for this. You've already factorised it, and that was k plus 3 times k plus 1 times k minus 1. Now, the solutions to that are k equals negative 3, or negative 1, or 1 from the three brackets. But... You were told at the beginning, k is positive, which means the only solution is k equals 1 as k is greater than 0. Of course, I've put all this down, but there's only one mark, and that mark is just for saying k is 1. And the marking scheme says no justification is required. I would have thought you should have had to put this down at least. D then, what's the angle between two vectors? If the angle between u and v is theta, 
What's its exact value? Well, you'll be using the scale of product again. But before we do that, let's get these components going here. So what are they actually? If k is 1, then this will be 1 cubed, which is 1, and that's just a 1. And 1 and 2 is 3. And then v is going to be, that's a 1. 3 times 1 is 3, and that's just a negative 1. There's your two vectors. How do you find the angle between the two vectors? Well, you work out the scalar product both ways round. You would say, well, u dot v equals the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle between them. That's one way of working at the scalar product. That's the magnitude way. That's the graphical way. The length times the length. And this, of course, would be working it out the components way. But you already know the answer to that. You already know that u dot v equals 1, so I don't need to go through all of that. So that means I just need to figure out what's u, what's the length of u, and what's the length of v. Jump the head again. Again, there was three marks here. The first mark would be forgetting the actual components, but that's both of them, though. Not just one each, it's both of them for one mark. No marks for putting this part down, but there's a mark for getting these two magnitudes. So working them out, what's the magnitude of vector u? Well, that'll be the square root of the squares of the components, of 1 squared and 1 squared and 3 squared. That's the square root of 1 and 1 and 9, so that's root 11. But you don't get a mark for that. You don't get a mark till you've done them both. So same again, what's the magnitude of v? Well, that'll be the square root of, remember it's just Pythagoras in three dimensions, 1 squared and 3 squared and negative 1 squared. Well, that must be exactly the same, because when you square a number, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So it's still going to be a 1, a 1, and a 9, but in the order of 1, 9, and 1. So that's also a root 11. Now, for those two answers, for this and this, together, you get a mark. And the last mark's just for putting it back into this to figure out cos theta. So I'll just rearrange that. That would be cos theta should be u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Now you could work that out again if you like. It makes no difference. It should come to 1. It told you that at the beginning. So it's 1 over root 11 times root 11. So that means the cosine of theta is exactly 1 over 11. So this should be the third mark. But actually the marking scheme allows you to leave it in the unsimplified form. And you get your third mark here. But hopefully you've got the dignity to tidy that up. And there's question nine.